Hey everyone, welcome back to Obscurus Lupa Presents. Ready for some martial arts again? I'll be completely honest, I didn't expect much from No Retreat, No Surrender. I was actually preparing myself for some pretty boring stuff here, but what I found was the most hilarious martial arts movie I've seen since Undefeatable. And that's a pretty hard bar to reach. Ignore the cover here, they just made it look like that when Jean-Claude Van Damme became hot shit. This was his first major role in a movie, and he pretty much seems like he's in an entirely different motion picture. This is not some rocky, Ruskies vs. the Yanks movie. This is actually about some kid who's being picked on by bullies in his neighborhood and learns how to fight, framed around this asshole Russian guy who beat up his dad. I won't spoil what happens till I get to it, but this is like an amalgam of everything that was popular at the time and succeeding at none of them. What it does succeed at is being so cliched, so shameful, and so corny that I had to look up a new term to describe how awesome it is. Slap up. It's a slap up movie. I looked that up just now. No retreat. No surrender. Before I start, there are several versions of this film, and I'm not sure which one I have. I know there's a version with new music that everybody hates. I don't care, but feel free to say something in the comments. Obscurus Lupa Presents previously saw Kurt McKinney in Sworn to Justice. Here, he plays our main character, Jason Stilwell, in his first movie role. He also got turned down for the lead in American Ninja because he was too young. And that's your fun fact for today. Jason is a weenie little teen who, shock of all shocks if you've ever seen me review a martial arts film, loves Bruce Lee. His father teaches karate and, when the class is dismissed, some bad guys show up. Here's how you know they're bad guys. These dudes are, I don't know, we'll just call them generic crime syndicate, and they want Jason's dad to join their organization and use his dojo as a front for their criminal activities. He politely declines, and they beat the shit out of him. Apparently, Los Angeles-based karate fighters with substandard martial arts skills were hard to come by in those days. For those of you who are wondering, though, Van Damme does actually play a Russian here. Person of the world, that obviously Belgian man. And he disappears until the end of the movie. Bye, Practically B-Plot! Karate Dad decides that moving is the only option, so Jason is whisked away to the magical land of Seattle, Washington. Jason takes his karate stuff and puts it into his new garage. Well, it was nice of the previous owners to leave that shelving in for- Oh, well, now he's destroyed it. Jason likes a certain martial artist. Who is it? Oh yeah, Michael Dudikoff, right. This is when Jason meets his new BFF, RJ, who is every black guy cliche ever and more. He's such a fun character, you can't help but have a good time watching him. I dare you not to smile when he's on screen. Check me out, dude. Nice move. Hey, thanks. My name's RJ. How you doing? Hi, Jason. Total bros. That's how I met my best friend. Look at this guy. Boombox on his bike, mad basketball skills, the jerry curl. He is the 80s. But you haven't seen the most glorious character yet. Allow me the privilege of introducing you to Scott. Bruce Lee freak. Just what Kingswood needs. This is one of our main antagonists, folks. I'm not even making a joke here. This is seriously who Jason is up against for much of this film. And could they be trying any harder to make him the most disgusting human being alive? He's eating ding-dongs out of the box like a fucking cake. And he had to have unwrapped each one individually and stuffed them back into the box to eat them like that. He's doing more work to be a lazy shit. How do you even do that? Yeah, yeah, we get it. Jason likes Bruce Lee. Oh, sweet heaven, this kid needs help. Is this gonna be like Sidekicks, where Bruce Lee is his Chuck Norris? Because that is not a movie you want to model your hero on. That's what doctors study so they can see early signs of schizophrenia. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a great first impression. He just hit him in the fucking face. I have no transition for what happens next. I tried to think of one. But I failed. Aw, oh, is that it? <laughs> I can do better than that. What's this? <laughs> Is 
Well, I dance a bit and I'm really quick. I rock to the beat so viciously. Why you go imitating Bruce Lee? I rock to the beat so watch my feet. <laughs> follow that. Okay, here's the sequence of events as far as I can surmise. Jason shows RJ how to use the wooden man, RJ responds by posing to music only he can hear, begins to rap, follows this up with a moonwalk, grinds his butt against Bruce Lee, tries to climb up the wall, and then crashes, recovering from that by breakdancing. I'm not recapping for you, I'm just making sure I actually saw all of this happen. But someday I'm going to be just like him. Hey, I hear he's buried in Seattle. Do you know where? Yeah, I'll take you there tomorrow. All right. Wait, are they actually planning a buddy trip to go visit Bruce Lee's grave? Listen, dudes, breakdancing and arranging cemetery visits are not things you do on the first date. Jason decides to montage it up in the next scene, but he ends up frustrating himself because I guess he sucks. Aw, don't worry about it, pal. Someday you can be as cool as this guy. So Scott's dad starts yelling at him, presumably for his subpar Andy Richter impersonation, and he begrudgingly gets back to work. That's when he spots RJ dancing to the music in his head again, and if there's anything Scott hates more than work, it's crazy people. Oh, I told you you couldn't run away forever. You and that Bruce Lee freak. Did we miss the scene where Jason even met this guy? He chases RJ off, and we get this masterful scene where he tries to figure out how to walk around things. This, too, he fails at. Aw, he brought him flowers. That's sweet of him. Then they go... visit... Bruce Lee's grave. That's... that's really his grave. Thanks, movie. You have a total respect for human life. Okay, well, it's a little bit creepy, but to be fair, it seems harmless enough. After all, Jason is just a really big fan. I'm a martial artist too, and I want to be like you someday. I practice what you teach, and I've read everything about you. That's how I knew that these were your favorite flowers. Run, Bruce Lee! Somebody get a restraining order for that dead man! And what is he, praying to him? He was just a very talented martial artist. He's not some supreme being, dudes. Thanks for that. I have this sneaking suspicion this movie was sponsored by something. Aw oh man, that's gotta ruin your lunch. Time to hand out some Jerry Curl Swirlies. I love that he's so angry he crushes his hamburger. Like, dude, we have yet to know why this kid hates our protagonist so much. Maybe it's because he's almost 30 and still in high school. Scott, why do you hate that kid so much? I've got my reasons. Oh yeah, that clears it up. Thanks. For some reason, Scott is friends with a bunch of martial artists. Um, so why does he hate Bruce Lee fans? And why are all of his friends martial artists? Surely they have better things to do than to help some fat kid beat up a guy he doesn't like? By the way, come to Burger Time, where you'll get beaten up by a pack of martial artists! Jason jumps in to help, and time for them to say the title of the movie. No retreat, no surrender. Aw oh man, I haven't been this impressed with a name drop since Fast Getaway! Aw, oh, what is this, a fast food cook? Cheese it! So, uh, no retreat, no surrender, unless it's a Burger Time employee? Karate Dad gets pretty pissy about it and tells Jason not to fight. Are you trying to raise a son or a clone? I don't know what I've raised! What? Yeah, that is kind of a confusing exchange. <laughs> Check this, folks. He actually has at least two Bruce Lee montages. I realize I have some strange obsessions in my life, but I've never dedicated an entire wall to any one person. Yet. The next day, RJ and Jason are watching a karate championship in front of, holy shit, his third Bruce Lee montage. RJ says that Not Rocky here has some dojos in Seattle, so they decide to check one out the next day. Jason signs up to take classes, but da-da, Scott's in the class too! Wait, what? Seriously? 
How long has he been training? We've previously seen that this guy is so lazy, he eats ding-dongs out of the box. Now we find out he's training in martial arts? So... he's a martial artist who just hates Bruce Lee fans? Wouldn't that be, like, his whole class? Look, I'm not saying that everyone loves Bruce Lee, but if that's your pet peeve, I wouldn't recommend studying martial arts. So anyway, Scott goes up to the replacement sensei of the day and tries to get Jason in trouble. What'd you fight about? He was talking about how bad Seattle karate is. Yeah. What? He was talking shit about Seattle karate? That just pisses me off. And as a professional, I must go against all karate codes and teach him a lesson. He pits him against his best fighter, and Jason gets his ass handed to him four times, which leads RJ to intervene and the two of them to run away like sissies. No retreat, no surrender! You know, I'm beginning to think the name of this movie is slightly misleading. But who cares, cause now we're at Kelly's birthday party! Wait, who's Kelly? Now hang on, the sensei's at her birthday party? How old is this dude? Is he actually supposed to be 30, or is he one of those 30-year-old high schoolers? Jason is getting ready to go to the party because I guess he has a crush on Kelly. I didn't leave anything out, folks. This party is the first and only time we've even heard of this chick. I don't know what's sadder, the fact they threw a pee joke in here, or that he could apparently taste if someone's peed in the pool. How's my little sister? Oh, she's not Rocky's little sister. Thanks for clearing that up. I hope you like it. Yeah, I only sat on it like two times on the way here. You're so adorable. I'm gonna love you to death. <laughs> yeah, I know! I'm shocked too! was that? And what are we, in silent movie theater now? Meanwhile, generic crime syndicate has shown up at Not Rocky's Dojo to tell him to join up. Wait, why are they in Seattle now? They went all the way across the country for this? There were no other dojos they could take over? And why do they have to take over dojos? This seems like a lot of work for not much payoff here. Oh, he's so adorable! He's so cute! Who gave it to you? Jason did. He's a friend of mine from Los Angeles we met last summer. Ah, so it was a Danny and Sandy type deal. What a wacky coincidence that she's not Rocky's sister. <laughs> Still doesn't explain why they're together now or when this happened. Also, that is one ratty boom mic. Sensei Douchebag shows up to tell Jason Kelly is spoken for and Scott throws food at him. So that was what the dramatic music was for earlier? Weak. Sensei Jock Boy starts beating Jason up as Kelly screams for them to stop. What a dreamboat. He's really impressing her here. Jason runs away and blames Kelly for apparently knowing this was going to happen. No retreat, no surrender! Oh yeah, do we really need a flashback to 40 seconds ago? Anyway, naturally this leads to Jason going back to Bruce Lee's grave and praying for help. Sensei Lee, I've got no place else to go! No one but you! Yeah, except for a girlfriend you just dissed, your best friend, and two loving parents. What a whiner. So help me, Ariel! I am going to get through to you! And if this is the only way... So be it. No retreat, no surrender! Jason sissies off to RJ, who apparently is doing his hair in his backyard, and together they move the rest of Jason's karate stuff to an empty house. This scene is sponsored by Pepsi, obviously. No retreat, no surrender. Wait, is that a spider? Ah, no retreat, no surrender! After rebuilding his sigil to St. Lee, Jason falls asleep in the abandoned house. This is when the movie completely shits itself. <laughs> You know. You asked me to come. Sensei Lee?
Uh, I, uh, I'm at a loss here. The ghost of Bruce Lee is a supporting character in this movie. I don't know whether to call this awesome or to be completely offended at this film's lack of shame. I mean, I've seen some pretty blatant Bruce Lee references in movies like this, but never to this extent. Holy moly, look at this! They're using him for their obvious Diet Coke plug! This is disgraceful! So, <sighs> Bruce Lee's ghost trains Jason in the art of karate. Never mind the fact that Bruce Lee taught kung fu, and that's not the same thing as karate. Also, the actor playing him, Tai Chung Kim, doubled for Bruce Lee in both Game of Death movies, and spoke all of his lines here in another language, which was then dubbed into English, meaning he and Kurt McKinney had no idea what they were saying to each other this whole time. Another fun fact, drink Diet Coke. After Ghost Lee beats him up a bit, Jason fights the urge to retreat and surrender, and instead has an 80s training sequence. This involves him doing push-ups at a child's playground, getting hit in the nuts, wearing short shorts, and this. No word yet on if they braided each other's hair later. The training continues when Lee shows Jason a new room full of sandbags. Wait, are we supposed to believe that the ghost set this up? Were the sandbags just lying around? Did he actually go out and buy them? Or are they ghost sandbags? Either way, I think they're stretching it a bit as far as what ghosts can do. How's that, Nita guy? Wait, so RJ can't see him? Jason actually is crazy? Then where the hell did the sandbags come from? And if he's training himself, does that mean he already knew how to do this? I'm so confused. Hey, are you crazy? Wait, what did he say after that? I really want to know how that conversation went. Lidaga, I did it! Well, I guess we don't need much fanfare here. Bye! Yeah, he was only the ghost of Bruce Lee. Guess they had to make a bigger deal out of Scott whispering in El Ducho's ear. Oh no, my ghost left me! <laughs> yeah, he sure can use that wire. Okay, I can't even make a joke about this one. The montages have lasted about 13 minutes now. Adding the ones in from earlier, you realize that means this movie is about 6 to 7% montage, right? Meanwhile, Karate Dad gets into a fight with some yokels from the bar and, seriously, one of the dudes is wearing a Coke t-shirt? We get it! We'll buy RC Cola already! Dad, there are times when you just have to fight. I'm very proud of you, son. Well, I guess if you're defending my honor, it's okay to use violence. Lesson learned. Then there's, a. Uh... Michael Jackson dance competition? What is... I don't even know what's happening anymore. And all of their problems are solved. In the meantime, Not Rocky has organized a fight with Generic Crime Syndicate to determine who owns the dojo. Instead of... calling the police? Wait, he's doing a televised event with his best fighters, and Scott's there? Surely he's got better people on his team. Unless he's just there to give Sensei shit for brains massages. The plan is to have two teams against each other, but Slickety McGee here is so cocky, he says all they need is one fighter to take on anyone who's brave enough to enter the ring. And that man is Scott. No, it's Van Damme, stupid. And he's got a cheering squad with him. Welcome back to the movie, broski. Ah, yes. Drink a nice, cool glass of Playboy magazine? Relax, he's cake. Sit back and enjoy the show. Yeah, that seems pretty legal. Sounds like Generic Crime Syndicate is gonna win this fair and square. No questions asked. But, just for yucks, Jason decides to step into the ring for the final battle. It is you, son. Is it not? But this time it'll be different. Russian. How dare you call him his own nationality? This is personal now! So Jason, with the help of Michael Jackson's biggest rapping fan, no retreat! No surrender! 
his hypocritical dad, and training from Bruce Lee's ghost in a completely different fighting style, defeats the Russian-Belgian and becomes a hero. Made sense on paper, I guess. Ah, nuts. Oh well, back to criminal stuff, I guess. The end. You can make a good assumption as to how I feel about this movie, but let me sum it up again just in case. This is an amusingly 80s feature that hits all of the right cliches and even invents some new ones. The inclusion of Bruce Lee's ghost may have been in poor taste, but you can't deny that the sheer balls of this movie somewhat makes up for it. The flick is too incompetent for you to really get offended. It all just comes off like some kid's fantasy put to film. To be fair, the martial arts in this are impressive, there were a lot of talented people involved, and it was a great watch. If you're looking for a movie to throw into your hilarious action flick night, this'll be a great addition. And it has a sequel! Let's Roth rock it up. If they can just stand each other... Rip, I don't wait around! Then you'll never see Loverboy again, and I'll blow you out of the water. The enemy doesn't stand a chance. 